special request, I've been asked to um, ask you all to, first of all, feel welcome here for the performance tonight. And second, to silence all your mobile devices. <laughs> Because Jeff was a true performer, and he was a performer who was a student. He wanted to be he wanted to be able to perform in every one of the disciplines. He wanted to be able to sing. He wanted to be able to dance. He wanted to be able to act. In a lot of those disciplines, he wasn't schooled, but he wanted to learn, and he wanted someone to coach him and teach him and mentor him in all those in all those disciplines. He was, however, a great performer. What led him into that was magic. He was a magician from the age about eight. I had his own business by the time he was 12 doing birthday parties. Uh, entertained many of the students in class to the chagrin of the teachers while he was at Chadwick. Uh, and then he took that, that 
that that sort of that energy that performance gave him and join the other performing arts on campus. When Jeff passed away, we really wanted to do something in his memory. As I said, he was the inspiration for this facility. And we felt that it wasn't just a theater that would really honor Jeff, but more a teaching facility that would allow kids like Jeff and generations of kids like Jeff who just had a passion to learn how to perform and to give them the tools with which to develop that passion. And from what I have seen at Chadwick and from what I've heard, the program here today has never been stronger. It is providing exactly what we hope, exactly our vision. That is to support the learning, the passion, the intensity of the kids at Chadwick to, to allow them to enjoy and the spirit of performing in no matter which discipline they would like to do it in. Today was an interesting day for us, and one of the reasons that many of the members of my family are here, and the prime movers and supporters of this whole campaign to build this facility were my parents, Roger and John Laverty. Uh, they really wanted to do something in Jeff's memory, and they led the effort to raise the money necessary to build this facility. About two hours ago, we got back into King Harbor, Harbor after taking a boat out with their ashes and spreading it in Redondo Canyon. They were together for 75 years, 75 great years with a terrific life. They died within three weeks of one another, uh, both at 93 years of age. They would have been here tonight, I know, if they could have been, but I know they're here in spirit. We had a wonderful celebration of life today on the ocean, and we're glad to be here to support this ongoing memory of our beloved Jeff tonight. Thanks so much for being here. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Richard Babcock, and I'm responsible for this. Instrumental music is my job here. Um, this is the Chamber of Jazz Ensemble, and we'd like to share one of our favorite recent pieces with you. This is actually composed by tenor saxophonist Seth Krieger. Can you wave, Seth? Okay. Look at that. I hope. He calls this piece Jazz Fun. I should probably warn you, there will be jazz solos. I guess that's appropriate. Um, Jonah is going to take a solo on trumpet, and Seth is going to take a solo on tenor. It is definitely appropriate to applaud when they're done suddenly. They'll be improvising. <laughs>
All right. I'm oh, sorry. My, my name is Kevin Babuder. I'm the director of vocal music here at Chadwick, where our program is rising and growing every single day and reaching new heights and I'm sure making Jeff proud. Um, last year, our upper school chorus participated in the Anaheim Heritage Festival, and I'm proud to announce that we took a first place gold medal finish at the festival last year. Our scores were so high that we were invited to the prestigious Festival of Gold, which is only held in five cities across the country. We're going to go to um, San Francisco this year to participate in that festival, and it's only the top choral programs in the country, so we're really excited to be able to do that this year. Today we're present, tonight we're presenting for you the Chadwick Concert Choir, and this is a group that meets three times a week in intense vocal training, and culminates with a performance at Trump National Golf Course uh, two times, uh, once at the end of each semester, which is actually a really fun event. Um, and so this is a classic Queen number called You're My Best Friend.
determination and approach. I'm awed and humbled every day I come to school uh, working with the likes of these guys that you see before you who are the cast of Animal Farm. Um, Jeff, um, I would like to say thank you. And in your spirit, I'd like to say we're continuing to try to create the magic that is there in theatre uh, and in music uh, and in dance. And I think uh, our only regret, our only wish, is that you could be here to see it and to share it with us. So here we are, the cast of Animal Farm. The theatre department's been lucky in the last two years. We have uh, won the State Festival um, Award for our production of Comedy of Errors and last year for the production of The Crucible. And uh, we've entered again the State Festival with this production of Animal Farm. Uh, it's the upper school show. We do it for the upper school, but we enter it as part of the festival. We're going to show you a brief extract um, it's one in two weeks, we're not quite ready, but we thought that we'd like just to share the style of work the piece is exhibiting and the story itself. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the cast of Animal Farm.
kids. Let us tell you our story. Let us show you our story. You may call it a fable. Because we are just animals. Pig. Horse. Cow. Animal. For you may see some point or moral, and smile knowingly and think you understand. You may call it a fable, but it is our story. Ours! And for those of you who fancy yourself wit and bright, you may cry,
Well, I got involved with performing arts when I was very, very young. And so when I came to Chadwick in sixth grade, I think one of the first things I did must have been the sixth grade Shakespeare play. I did A Midsummer Night's Dream with Miss Schneider, and it was the first time I'd ever done Shakespeare, and that made me fall in love with Shakespeare. It was an introduction to Shakespeare for me. While I was at Chadwick, I um, most spent most of my time doing um, improv and theater. Um, I was in the chimps, and um, I was also in the chorus. To be here to celebrate the Laberty 10-year anniversary is more exciting than I thought it would be because of the fact that I'm, I'm getting to perform with um, fellow Rainbow Connection members and um, I honestly never thought that that would ever happen again. So as many of you know, Jeff was a performer. He would perform anytime, any place, anywhere. His passion was magic, but he loved theater and he loved music and he was learning to love dancing and he was taking singing lessons. It didn't matter what the performance, he loved to do it. After going to UCLA and seeing the kind of spaces that we were using there, I mean, the Lafferty Center is like state of the art. Like I was in a professional training program that didn't have half of the capabilities that the Lafferty Center does. And because of it, we had so many I mean, different, there were new classes starting. There were different levels of acting classes because there were actually rooms to have acting classes in. And the theater itself, we were allowed to do just so many different types of shows that I don't think were possibilities beforehand. Our family is not a family of performers. Jeff was unique. But when we saw him, the pleasure we would get from watching him perform and the pleasure we would get from seeing him try new things and experiment uh, I was his assistant in magic, and it was so much fun to watch him develop those talents. When he passed, we really wanted to look for something that had meaning for him. Not just a plaque, not just a statue, not just a memory, but something that would reflect his passion and allow that passion to be uh, bred and grown in future generations of Chadwick students. How do I remain so calm and cheerful? How do I retain my peace of mind? Let me just explain my rationale. It's all in your perspective. Listen. Listen. To an old Hungarian philosophy. Justin, hello. All right. Um, I'm uh, Rodney Rincon, and I was the technical director for all of those first 10 years in Laverty. And I did know Jeff Laverty. Um, in fact, there was one show when he had a solo bit, and uh, for that bit, he had a follow spot on him. And uh, one night, the student follow spot operator couldn't be there. So I took their place. And I remember when I was shining that follow spot on Jeff Laverty, the only thing that came to mind was, I don't think I've ever seen anyone who belongs in the spotlight more than Jeff Laverty. Well, if you've ever uh, attended performances here at uh, Laverty Center, uh, at the end of the show, you have applauded uh, while you are applauding the cast, probably observe the cast, make a gesture very graciously up to the back of the theater as a kind of appreciation for the students who you never see, um, who never take a bow, but are just as much a part of the show as are our wonderful actors, singers, dancers, and musicians. And in fact, you really couldn't do the show without them. And those are the students who make up our stage group. Uh, now, who are these people? Well, <laughs> I can tell you, they're quite a group of characters. Um, you have athletes who are scrambling to find arts credits any way they can. <laughs> uh, you have some people who have arts credits to burn, but want to try something different. Um, you have people who are just scared to death of performing, but love the theater and want to be involved. And then sometimes you have performers who want to try their hand backstage just to see things from a new perspective. But the one thing they all have in common is 
man, they want to do the best possible job they can. And they also want to have a pretty good time doing it. Now, good time doing it. Uh, I had one group, when we would do our work sessions in here, building the set, getting ready for the show. Uh, at the end of each session, the period where we did stage crew, they would get in a circle with their hands down here, like you see done on the athletic field very often, and then they would intone, crew. <laughs> because, you know, backstage you had to speak there or something. Uh, the same group. <laughs> You know, uh, typically when we're changing scenery, it's done you know, when all the lights go out in between the scenes. And these guys were just obsessed about not being seen. Well, we always always, you know, wear black. Uh, but these guys, one time for one show, during all the scene changes, they wore these Lone Ranger black masks <laughs> and did all their changes up. But that wasn't good enough. The next show, they wore black watch caps, black gloves, and put on blackface. The only problem was they used shoe polish instead of grease coat. And they pretty much looked like charcoal briquettes for a week after the show closed. Um, now when we first got our wireless headsets, and this was a great convenience, you saw some of our stage chairs wearing one. It meant you weren't tethered to a cable plugged into the wall we could get anywhere on stage and be able to communicate. Well this group, they adopted Code names. And code names like the Flying Bandit, uh, Leaping Panther, <laughs> Sitting Turtle, <laughs> and uh, my personal favorite, the Scooting Shoelace. <laughs> I, of course, was the captain. Um, well, we had fun, uh, but they were really conscientious about being on time, being at work. Now, here's my favorite example of that. One Saturday, uh, when we had a show that evening, um, some of the stage crew students went target shooting at a shooting range in Topanga. Well, it was time to jump in the car and get back in time to do the show, but they couldn't get their car started. And they were very much afraid of actually being stranded in Topanga. Well, they called and left a voicemail. There were no cell phones back then. And uh, when the rest of the crew arrived, we started scrambling, trying to figure out how we could do the show with half our crew missing. Um, well, just as we're in the middle of this, um, the mother of one of the stranded students shows up with the younger brother of that student to take his place. And he's standing there shivering like this because he's in middle school. You know. <laughs> said, well, okay, two more hands, let's get him in here. So we're in the huddle and we're here. And, and then this sputtering, smoky car pulls it <laughs> to the parking lot. Those guys jump out and they're ready. And this is like two minutes before curtain. So we were ready to start the show on time. And, um, uh, but that mother who brought the younger brother, uh, what does that tell you about the sense of responsibility taught in that moment? Uh, um, oh, you know what, I left out one of the rituals. We have a tradition of hiding a white dolphin, a little carved effigy, somewhere on the set as a good luck token. Broadway stagehands do this, they have a carved white elephant. Well, of course, our version is the white dolphin. Um, and if we're in the middle of a tech rehearsal and things are starting to go wrong, the first thing you hear over the heads is, it's the white dolphin out there, Where does, where's the white dolphin? Get the white dolphin. Uh, and sure enough, you get the white dolphin out there and things start to settle down. <laughs> start to work. Um, but the downside of having such a conscientious crew is that sometimes you make mistakes. Uh, like the late Mike Q, for example. Ta da Okay. Um, but usually these mistakes are small and not even noticed by the audience and don't hurt the show at all. But they, they would beat themselves up about it, beat themselves up. So I said, look, I worked for years in the profession before coming to Chadwick. Uh, believe me, even with professional stage hands, you never, rarely have a perfect show where everything is exactly right from start to finish. Uh, perfect show was very rare. 
Well, as soon as those words came out of my mouth, you saw the look in the face of this crew. A perfect show. <laughs> the perfect show then became the holy grail that every, every crew had to pursue from then on to this day. It's become an absolute obsession. But they're still rare. In those 10 years, there have only been five. And all of them have been on a closing night. For the record, it was closing night of Allison concert, closing night of Rent, uh, closing night of Windows, closing night of Blood Brothers, and closing night of The Crucible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, during those 10 years, every work session, every rehearsal, every performance was perfect in my book. And a perfect 10 years is a hard act to follow. Thank you.
Thank you, Piper. Hi, my name is Michael McNamara. I'm the class of 2001. I'm really excited to present. <laughs> I'm really, really excited to present you guys the next piece, which is going to be a dance piece. And this is a recreation of some choreography uh, by Jan Reese, who used to teach dance here at Chadwick. Uh, this was a piece that was performed in the 1995 and 1999 uh, Chadwick uh, dance concerts. And back in that day, to be a guy who wanted to be in dance was really intimidating. And so hence there were no guys in dance at Chadwick. Um, but I was always so jealous and I always really wanted to do this piece um, when, when, when they did it at the dance concert. So I was just elated when Crystal Lee, who's producing the show, asked me to come back and do the whole piece of this choreography. Because it was something I always wanted to do in high school and now I have the opportunity to do it on this beautiful stage. So we are really excited to present to you Jan Reese's recreation of the Lindy Hop Bop.
okay. All right, I'm gonna keep searching. Yeah, she, her leg was badly broken, and then she jumped on it, and it got worse. <laughs> I think I know what's wrong. What? Your leg is broken. <laughs>
this, do a little uh, mini scenes. We do something called tags and wipes. Um, so we're going to have some improvisers, and uh, you might see someone clap and then replace an improviser on stage. Um, that's a character change just with the actors and starting a new scene. Wipes is a completely new scene. Okay, and they'll figure it out. And you will figure it out. <laughs> um, can we get a suggestion for a new kind of coffee for Starbucks? <laughs> uh, pumpkin October
fast class. Bring you out here. You want to talk about math class? We're in the great outdoors, Santa. There's nowhere around here. Miles and hundreds of miles. Jerry, I just. You know how that that one day in January when we were talking about how it'd be great to just get out of our normal lives and. And then I went and bought the RV that night. You inspired me. I know, but I. Who are we kidding? We're just college students who want to live more than studying in the library. Just the college students? Would college students really bring their this? professor along? <laughs> <laughs> Great professor. I'm glad you caught my call. And their mom. <laughs> oh, and do I hear a cousin or two? <laughs>
power to change the world. Uh, so the song that I'm going to sing for you is called Lost in the Stars from a musical of the same name uh, with music composed by Kurt Weill. It's set in 1949 in South, uh, apartheid South Africa. And uh, the, the singer of this song is a minister who's having a crisis of faith. But for me, I interpret that this song means that the work of justice is never done.
earth as I choose. Burn the bridge, bet the store, baby's coming home no more. Not for the life of me. Break the lock, post my bail, done my time, I'm out of jail. Not for the life of me. You see, there's gotta be more than the one light town where the light is always red. Gotta be more than an old ghost town where the ghost ain't even dead.
myself included if we were in, for all the years that we were in the upper school. And, uh, and I can say, especially for myself, but also on behalf of many other people behind me here, that it was one of the most important experiences that we had here at Chadwick and in fact in our lives. Jeff was a devoted member of, Chat of uh, Rainbow, and uh, many of the people here were in Rainbow with him. Every single person who was in Rainbow Connection, we, we all know the same song. Uh, it is Together Wherever We Go uh, from uh, Gypsy. And uh, every Rainbow show closed with that song. And so no matter when you were in Rainbow, you knew the song. I will say, we came here with no rehearsal, and we're going to do it for you now. <laughs> Sometimes. 